Uh, it's Holly Hotspurs back with another one. Chatting all things Tottenham, we're second to none. Special guests every time, if it's win, lose, or draw. The passion is high, like Harry Kane when he scores. Or when Lloris makes a world class save. We got Hoybier running the mid every game. Settle down, stick around, say your thoughts with the panel. And make sure you're subscribing to the channel. Coys. Hello and welcome to another episode of Holly Swap Spares Live, where again we'll be talking about some transfer news, but also the fact that we are currently in South Korea at the moment and Conte seems to be working those boys to the extreme and it is lovely to see it. Um, but with me tonight to dissect everything, I am joined once again by three fabulous guests. First of all, Crackers, it's so nice to have you back on, mate. How are you this evening? Very well. Thank you for the invite back on, Holly. Good evening to you. Good evening to everybody or good morning, good afternoon. If you're watching in South Korea or you might be flat out in your bed, absolutely broken by Conte's first day of pre-season training. Who knows? But nice to be back on. Lovely to see you all. No, I love it. Thanks, Crackers. Like I say, I'm glad I'm not out there with those boys. Jesus. Um, also with me returning, we have Connor. Connor, how are you, my friend, this evening? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Uh, very excited for the season to start. I know we've obviously still got pre-season, but yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I don't envy them lot on the pre-season tour. It's so hot right now. You can probably see I'm sweating anyway. So <laughs> yes, yes, but good, good. I uh, hope, hope you and everyone else is, is well as well. Yeah, no, we're good. Like I say, I, I'm not even moving and I'm sweating, so sort of being them lot. Um, and also, returning, he calls himself the expensive sub. He is doing me a favour once again tonight. Jay, how are you? I cost you a lot less than Spurs cost Richarlison. I definitely, you didn't get, definitely didn't give me 50 million to come on today. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm good. Two weeks in a row, people are going to start talking. But yeah, no, I'm glad to be on. And like I say, I haven't mixed the cameras around, so it doesn't look like we are in the same room when we are in the same room. But regardless, no, I appreciate it, Jay. Thanks again for coming on. And welcome to everybody, obviously, in the uh, channel already tonight. Hope we are all well. We have a lot to talk about and dissect with us tonight so first of all i'm gonna get his name right this time because i was uh done dirty last week calling him Lenglet and not Lenglet. but it's official crackers that Lenglet has joined Sutton hotspur well it'll be Lenglet to my dad let me tell you because he anglicizes everybody's name and i was really worried earlier this week because uh stephen bodgwins had gone to ajax who, uh, but Bergvine, oh no, not not to old man Cracknell. He was Bodgwins, Steve Bodgkins or Bodgwins. It changed. Uh, so uh, Maurizio Cappuccino. Before that, we had. So uh, so I'm glad somebody's come in that he can actually ang anglicise because he'll never ever be Lingley to uh, to old man Cracknell. He'll be Linglet, Linglet. Come on, this is this is Brexit, Linglet. Come on. <laughs> so, uh, but yes. Yeah, Oh, Conte's got uh, it's got a good record of taking players that you know fallen out of favour and a little bit underperforming. It was same with Kulusevski, and it seems that the same sort of thing with with Lengley. You don't get to make it to Barcelona's team and, and not have something about you. So he's he's seen something. Um, we read all the Twitter experts saying, oh, well, no, actually, he's XP, this XG. I don't understand any of that. That's all way, way, way past me. Footballers, when you get a manager like Conte, if he sees something, you have to trust him. I mean, blimey, look what he'd done with us last season. Look what he's done with, with teams in the past. So if he's good enough for him, he's good enough for us. It's as simple as that. So, uh I'm just loving seeing the business we're doing and doing it early um, because normally our transfer windows is like a film. Have you ever seen the film Trading Places, Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in they go in that last five minutes, didn't they? And and, pro and put the price of, a uh, spoiler alert, put the price <laughs> down and, and go and clean up. And that's normally Tottenham's transfer dealings, isn't it? About 10 p.m., Daniel Levy picks his phone up and goes, Right, let's go and get some players in. But but this time, no business done early, and uh, absolutely loving it. Really, really loving it. Loving in Spurs two point zero under Enoch. Carry on. It's great, isn't it? It's a great feeling. Like you say, like normally we are the people doing the business late on, and we get the scraps. Whereas this time we're going in. Right, we've got a plan. 
let's go and get it done. And I know Jay coming to you second. I know obviously last week we we delved into Langlet. Sorry, I've done it now. Langley. And we were talking about obviously the fact that there's lots of people on Twitter, like Crackers have said, they're kind of downgrading him, the fact that he's been playing poor on a Barca side, this, that, and the other. But what did you kind of talk about last week for those that missed uh, last week's show? Well, I just kind of said last week, a lot of people are writing off Linglet, totally forgetting that he's won four trophies at Barcelona, which is four more than Tottenham have in the last God knows how many seasons. Um, so if anyone thinks that that's not added value and experience to our squad, then you need to give your head a wobble because, you know, regardless of how he played throughout the entire season, and I said it last week, Barcelona are low on confidence. It's the worst Barcelona team that's been around probably in the whole time I've been alive. Um, and you're going to play badly in that team if you're low on confidence. One thing I did like the most about was him coming out in his interview saying that he wants to be aggressive and help the team with the ball. I definitely think that that is going to be evident. His time spent at Barcelona, which are obviously known for being such a well play, well ball playing team. Um, and, you know, I, I want to hark, um, hark back to the days of Toby Alderweireld playing 50 yard pings over the top. If Lenglet can recreate some of that magic, and uh, gives us a bit more confidence when we're playing out from our goalkeeper, as we tend to do quite a lot, uh, then uh, then I think he is nothing but a solid signing. And again, good business. I mean, yeah, it's true. Like you said, he came out, he wants to be aggressive and he's so excited and he wants to give everything um, for this Tottenham team in order to try and win trophy for us and fight and everything. Um, but like Jay's kind of alluded to, Connor, it is kind of good business because it's kind of like try before you buy. It's only a season-long loan deal. So if it does go a bit pear-shaped, we haven't really lost much, have we? No, uh, as Crackers and Jay say, I think everyone is, well, not everyone, people are being too critical. There's so many reasons why this is great. You know, as Crackers said, Conte is so good at turning around, not just players, teams in general. You know, when he came in, we, we looked lost under Nuno, you know, this is never would have seen where we, where we got to. Um, in terms of the fact that he's a winner, you know, we are recruiting winners. Look at Perisic as well. We, we need winners in the team, you know, so that's another good thing. The ball playing side of things as well, we've needed that. He's the cover on the left side for Davis as well. You know, and yeah, it's a loan. We're, we're not paying a transfer fee. It, it's a tester. He's going to want to play as well. He wants to get back in that French team. So, yeah, it, it's a win-win. There's nothing wrong with this. I, I personally, well, I say that. If he's making mistakes left, right, centre, it might be a bit of a different story. But <laughs> I think in general, gives, this is, this he, is great. Yeah. It gives us a, another dimension, doesn't he? Because there's certain games, uh, Lengley, I mean, was, uh, Jay was talking about all the virals, 50-yard pings over the top. Well, Lengley will actually put balls in better than Alderweireld could. That's that's his that's his meat and gravy, that is. Um, so certain games, Davies, you'll put in when you're under the cosh and you need somebody a little bit more of a dogs of war. And in other games where we're going to go and take it two teams, he's there to be pinging balls over the top to Sonny and, and Kane. So uh, it just gives us another dimension and another way of playing, bringing him in. And it's a season-long loan. This is probably 10 minutes of beer sales to Lady Gaga just pays for him. So, I mean, <laughs> just make her half-time break at the concert, like 15, 20 minutes longer and get everybody supping beers there. He's, he's, he's paid for. He's no loss, isn't he? No, you're right. And I think, like, there's lots of people, obviously, that we've said about that slating him. But I think we need to get out this mindset of just this starting eleven because we know that our team off the bench isn't fabulous as well as on it. So it's nice to have, like you guys already said, an option to obviously come on. I mean, the only disappointing thing, Crackers, staying with you quickly, is obviously his visa wasn't ready to, to go out in South Korea. Do you think that will necessarily affect him or do you think it's just one of those things, sadly, that's happened? Well, I think he's probably seen the first day of pre-season training today and uh, gone round and kissed the person who ever d dishes the visas out and said, thanks very much. So, uh, no, I, I don't think it's going to make a terrible difference. I can't see him being the regular starter there. So, um, I think Conte's been more interested in getting the actual core of that squad because you're right, there's no... 11 now it is a squad it's going to be a long season it's going to be a weird season as well with the world cup and the break that comes so you do need some depth so that's not one i'm worried about didn't quite make it out there so uh it'd have been nice because obviously more for the team bonding and get fitness up as well but i'm sure uh somebody will be some drill sergeant will be putting him through his uh paces at hotspur way 
as well. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's not not too much of a, a worry, really. No, yeah, I think you're right. I think, like I say, it's a shame that you won't be able to do bonding with the team, but I don't think it's too much of an issue. Um, and obviously, the other guy that we finally, I know we signed prior, but he is finally in a Spurs shirt. We've actually seen it happening now. And that is obviously Richarlison. We, I've spoken heavily on Richarlison. I think lots of people have, so I won't delve into it lots. But obviously, Jay, there was that bit of, uh, what should we say, argy-bargy between him and Romero last season. And obviously, the little video came out of them two hugging. Now, I don't want to say it's fake, um, but it was quite lovely to see. I did enjoy it. Well, I think if we were entertained last year by Emerson Royale's compilation videos, I think we've only got one thing to look forward to this year, and that is going to be Richarlison's social media accounts. Um, it, you know, if it's him doing it, which I pray to God it is, because I'd love to think that it's him that does all of his own stuff. But if it is his social media team, whoever it is out there needs a pay rise. The compilation he posted on Instagram last night had me dead. Absolutely dead. I think it shows as well that he uh, he pays a lot of attention to the fans as well. You know, we had Max on last. Well, you had Max on last week. And obviously, it, you know, he saw Max's TikTok of him singing and doing the football chant and, and all of that sort of stuff. So I think it's really important that a transfer like that for the money that we bought him for, you know, it's not just about what you do on the pitch. It's about what you do off it as well. And the interaction with fans um, and, and understanding the club's culture, understanding what the fan group want to see from players, you know, after he signed, posting the video, of, um, posting the picture of him uh, in the Everton shirt against Arsenal in the centre circle, looking down on an Arsenal player, you know, and reposting that, you know, going through the effort of going back through his old pictures to find it, to repost it after signing. You know, I, I think, you know, he is a classic shit house, and I love it at Spurs. I love to see it. And I think we have kind of need, obviously, we've got players like Romero that you could class as a shit house um, already. And now adding Richarlison and those two basically not hating each other, but they had a bit of an argy bargy last season. It, I think it is nice to see that there is passion there, though you're not think, Connor. Exactly that. I think you need that in the team. You want a bit of, you know, you want them giving it to each other in training. You want just more than them, them going out there and thinking the same thing. You want to, you want relationships in the team that aren't just all this constant, we've got to all do this together. And you want, you're going to have a bit of tension. You know, the whole Brazil-Argentina thing, of course. But I think in general, it, it's only a good thing. And he's got such a personality. Like, I slate... Before he, before it happened, I was uh, I'm in an orange because he's the sort of player that is on the floor all the time. He's the sort of player that tries to wind up the ref. You know, he's but that's his personality, and you know, yeah, exactly. It's, it's his South American passion, um, like Stuart says. So he's he's it's only a good signing. It's a lot of money, but I think we need, like you said earlier, we need depth, and he is exactly what that is. He's the depth. He's got the personality. He's a handful. You know, going forward, yeah, it might seem like a lot of money, but I don't actually think there's anything wrong with it, to be honest. And, you know, and he was scoring in teams that were down there, you know, so imagine what you can do in a team which is create, creating a lot more chances. So, mm. no, I, so said, no, I think you're right. And, and I think, like, obviously there's been loads of, loads of controversy about the price, this, that and the other. But you look at City's bench, you look at Liverpool's bench, they're, they're, they're all expensive benches. And I think that's the thing we need to remember. The only annoying bit, obviously, Crackers, is that obviously he'll miss the first game of the season against Southampton because of obviously throwing that flair uh, when they beat uh, uh, Chelsea last season, which is a bit annoying. But again, I don't think it's going to worry us too much. No, and expect some more of that. That just seems to be in his, uh, in his nature because no doubt we're going to see more flares this season, it just seems to be something that's crept in, and uh, he just—he's got that type of thing in his locker, you know. He put up the picture. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> he's gone. He's flared it off. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Um, but quickly going back to what uh, he was saying before he comes back, I think he was talking about obviously the flare situation and the fact that's kind of within his kind of blood. I'm assuming he's pushed the wrong button there. Um, we'll wait for him to come back, but we'll move on. Slightly, so obviously the other big uh, thing, which is Spence. Now I'm waiting an age for this to bloody happen. I don't know about you two, but Connor, how are you feeling about it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's frustrating Hang because on. sorry, it's Connor, been... that's all He's right. Back. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you pushed the wrong button. 
<laughs> I don't know what happened there. I just completely <laughs> fell off the edge. Of, it must have been it must have been Richarlison's team watching yeah, and wondering yeah, yeah. where I was going with it. So he's that much of a shit ass. He can even reach out to the Canary Islands and cut your internet <laughs> off. <laughs> but oh, as I was saying, that, that's just in his makeup, isn't it? That's who who he is. That's what he does. He put he put up that picture of him on the bus. You're gonna get fireworks with him or at least flares anyway um it, it, it's, it's just in his makeup but he is one of those players as you were saying that when he's against you he's infuriating but when he's yours you absolutely love him he's like dog uh drogba and he's like costa and uh you know quite a few a few of the other south americans that love their their dark art so uh i don't think 50 million pounds in in football terms, is a great deal of money anymore. Either I don't know what he's on per week, but you know that's what, what do us fans care about that really? He's just uh, you know I, I think I think he's a, a great addition, a really really great addition, and I just can't wait to start watching him. And uh, it's it's the North London derby that's the one, isn't it? That's where we want to see him come on because he knows arrow. that that's arrow, yeah right. it that's. Yeah. That's instant cult legend hero forever status. If he comes on and rags a few of them around and nicks a winning goal or something, that's it. You're 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 done. It's like winning the lottery. I, I look forward to legends nights with him in about twenty years time <laughs> and uh, speaking to him about when he popped up and stuck a couple uh, couple past Arsenal in a in a North London derby. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing him. Really am. Like, it will be, and I think that's the thing. We we like players that obviously wear the shirt with pride, and I think every club he's gone to, he's done that. So Tottenham will be the next one for us. But Connor, I come to you next because obviously Spence. Now it's been a long time since uh, we've all been thinking it'd be coming through the door, and he still hasn't come our way. Do you think he's still coming? Hope so. Um, I mean, if he's not, then we need to start figuring out who our next option is going to be. Um, Spence, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, that's the only one that I've ever seen banded around this summer. I don't know if there's any other names. Um, I mean, you look at someone like Forrest getting in Williams. Williams ain't, ain't a bad addition, to be fair, but I think it's got to happen, surely. Um, 15 million is a no-brainer, so I, I've no idea what's holding it up, you know, I, and yeah, it, it has to, because if it doesn't, then we really need to start thinking about what, what we're going to do. I mean, my one thing is Doherty at the end of last season, before we had the injury, was starting to pick up a bit. Emerson's had little moments. So so what happens there? Is it one of them goes? Is it we've got three right backs? You know, it's you know, it's uh it's it's a tough one. It's a tough one. It is yeah, it is very interesting. I mean, I'm glad you brought up uh, Neko Williams because I was talking about it on Twitter today. Obviously, I know that um Spence is a Middlesbrough player, but it was between us and obviously Forrest that are going after it. But now Neko Williams is signed, you're kind of thinking, oh, does that mean he's more swaying towards us? Um, and I know you've just spoken, Connor, about obviously um, other players in the mix. Jay, I'll come to you because obviously it's been noted in the last couple of days about Carl Walker Peters apparently having a buyback clause of 30 million. Now, could this be an avenue you could probably go down, or do you think it's just to speed along the Spence kind of deal? Um, I think the thing is with Spence is uh, it's the same reason we like we like a lot of these signings is he's a little like we said we use this phrase over and over again because it's the most important one he's a little bit of a shit house he's got a bit of a personality about him and we've got the manager to manage him that's the difference uh, it, and you've seen a lot of players come in that seem to have those personalities um, and Conte seems to nullify that and make them express that on the pitch in a positive way and Romero's probably the biggest. Uh, the biggest sign of that. Um, with Carl Walker Peters, uh, would I take Carl Walker Peters over Jed Spence? Uh, yes. Would I pay 30 million for a player that we sold? Maybe not. I, I don't know about the business side of it. I, I would have thought if we were going to put a buyback, we wouldn't have put it that high. Obviously, I know that is what it is. Um, but, uh, you know, my question is, where's Jaff, Where's Jaffet? That's my question. Kind of fallen off the face of the earth. If he doesn't get in the team this year, is he going to end up at a Bournemouth or is he going to end up at a, a Fulham or, you know, is he going to end up somewhere? Because he, he can play wing back. He proved it when, when we played against Liverpool all those years ago. For anyone that watched the uh, the All or Nothing documentary, you'll know, you know, they've done a whole 
bloody segment on that game just for him. Um, so, but then also, he, is he more of a centre back? It's just, it's just right wing back is just one of those positions where now that we're playing that five, and like um, kind of said about Doherty last season, why would you not play Doherty? Because the reason why Doherty was so awful at the beginning of the season was he was playing out of position. He was playing in a four or he was, you know, playing. In, and then towards when Conte came in, you saw him become a totally new player and play like he was for Wolves because what a shock. You put him in the position he's best at and he performs, you know. So uh, right wing backs, that weird thing. Jed Spence, I don't want to overpay for him. I think that's the biggest thing. I really don't want to overpay for him if he's not going to start. If, if we're going to if we're gonna pay big money for him, he needs to start over Doherty regardless, just because I just think he, if you're spending that much on a young talent in this day and age, they need to prove themselves early. None of this sitting them on the bench for a while if you're going to use the big price tags. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's a lot of personalities. I'm all for personalities, but I also think, you know, you don't want to, you know, break the camel's back with, with having too many in there. No, that's a fair shout. I think, like you said, it is very confusing at the moment with that kind of side of things. Like you say, if you bring in Spence, do you really want to pay that high for someone that could be, I mean, we've been here so many times, someone that could become something and then actually doesn't become anything. I mean, Crackers, what's your kind of take on it? Are you hoping Spence comes in? Do you like the idea of possibly buying back KWP? Like, is that, what's your kind of stance on it? I think uh, Kevin Walker Peters' story is probably two and two coming to seven. Somebody in the press has just run with it and it's gained a bit of legs and off it's gone. So uh, I can't see that happening. With Spence, mm, I, I, I tend to agree with Jay. You know, Doherty was doing brilliantly. Uh, Emerson, I really like. I do really like. I mean, he's a bit Bambi on ice at times, but. There is a player in there, and I think, you know, there's a player waiting to mature and come out. He's got an engine on him. He looks like a footballer as well, doesn't he? He's got that build and physique. He just, I don't know, he's uh, he's a bit like a Rubik's Cube that's, like you know, maybe three or four squares off of being completed and just needs them final couple of twists and turns. So there's more than enough cover there, really. Um with Spence as well, again, like we're saying, there's already a hell of a lot of characters in that team. And, uh, you know, the, my worry is if you do get too many characters in, then you could end up with those clashing. There could be, you could get problems with too many characters as well. You know, not, not everyone can be the, the, the general. You do, you do need a few foot soldiers as well. So, and then, I mean, something that a lot of people not even contemplated yet, this could be Conte's last season with us. He doesn't hang around long at clubs. So if Daniel and the board are not looking, and Paratici especially, are not looking already elsewhere, just in case he gets to the end and goes, right, that's it, my time is done. You know, I've done my two and a bit seasons. Um, Then you've really got to bring somebody in that's able to control all these characters uh, uh, and personalities as well. It's no good bringing a Nuno in again or (laughs) Ryan Mason to cover. They're going to get eaten alive by people like Romero in the team and Richarlison and a Spence. And, you know, there's one or two others already that are big, big personalities. I don't think people quite realise just a bigger voice. Loris is as well. Mm -hmm. Ugo's huge. I mean, he comes across as quite quiet and unassuming but I, I do hear he's quite you know he's he's quite the father figure and authority in in that dressing room as, as the captain so there's a lot of personality and it needs a good ed teacher really does we all we all went to school when the supply teacher came in for the day because like mr jones like the, the disciplinarian was off and that was it we, we we run riot so you know if we end up getting mr mason in as a supply teacher the kids are going to be on their desks and, uh, you know, twanging each other with uh, with rulers and all sorts. So it's something for the club to consider if he is, if this is going to be his, his last season. I don't even want to contemplate it at the moment, <laughs> but but contemplate it, you know, the, the club at least must, must contemplate that. So 
yeah, to get back to the main point and Spence, I think he'll be a good addition, but I'm not going to be upset if he doesn't come either. So he's not, maybe the club's just holding um, and looking at their options. Maybe somebody comes along, but slots straight in, but ready to go over Emerson and over Doherty and and better than Spence. And we drop sort of 40, 45 million quid on a player like that instead of 25 on someone like Spence. Yeah, I think you're right there. I think that's the thing. I think we're all kind of in the same boat and then eh, we won't be that fast. It's just, it's taking so long. We were linked with this guy right at the start of the, well, before the transfer window and we've done five already and you're thinking to yourself, this isn't quite got over the line yet. Something must be up. And that's the worrying thing, I think, about all of it. Um, moving slightly away from transfers, obviously, we are in South Korea at the moment on the South Korean tour. Uh, it is lovely to see the boys sweating. Before we even get into that, it was so nice, uh, Connor, to see Sonny greeting all of the players at the airport. It's, it's so lovely, but that is, that's Sonny. That is him in a nutshell. You know, he, he's at home. He's He's got... Is for him, he would be like that's his family with him, you know. So little things like that are just they're so lovely to see. But it, it doesn't surprise you because that is him, you know. He's so so lovely and just yeah. And I, I bet that tour, you know, regardless of how we fare with the results, you know, Sevilla, Roma, even if we if we were to lose all the games, you know, I, any other season you might think, oh, this isn't good going into the season. But I feel like with this, just because the vibe is so nice, it wouldn't affect. It, it wouldn't affect the, the team camp that that much, you know. You know, especially with a couple not there either as well. So I say a couple, obviously long lay and, and all of that. But but yeah, so it's interesting. I'm I'm most interested in that he's taken parrot to be honest, because that that's a that's a very interesting one. You know, I saw something about him. Apparently, apparently we turned down a move from Sunderland. Uh, you know, inquiring and that that's 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 very interesting because you think well, considering how parrot did at MK Dons last season, is this a is this a final chance for him? You know, it's yeah, it's interesting. Very interesting. No, it is really interesting you brought that up because I think I saw that only like a couple of hours before we went live. And like you say, it, it's 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 not strange, but it's it's in- interesting the fact that obviously the deal to Sunderland was turned down so we could fly out with Conte and the team. So we'll have to see how that one kind of develops. But obviously the first person that greeted uh, Sonny was Kane J. Now there is whispers that obviously a new contract will be coming soon. It'd be silly of me to ask how do you feel about that, but I think I already know the answer. But how great would that be? Oh, uh, oh sorry. There you go. Uh, massive, 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 massive. Um, one of the few Spurs fans who, with the uh, what happened last summer with the City situation, actually supported Kane through it um, and kind of said, I'm going to wait to see what he has to say first before it all comes out. Um, rather than just jumping on the media hype and Gary Neville playing golf with him. Um, you know, so I, I definitely think, for me, a Kane deal would be huge. I think Kane leaving is dependent on success this season or Conte going. And I think if we're thinking we're going to see a deal anytime soon, I don't think so. I think if I was in Kane's position, which I'm not, the you know ex goalkeeper and left back. I'm definitely not a world class striker. Uh, so if uh, if uh, if I was in Kane's position, I would definitely wait till halfway through the season or possibly after the World Cup to reassess where I'm at and where the club's at. I, I don't think it makes sense for him to sign a new deal now. It makes sense for the club, and I'd be all for it. But as as I did, I'd be there's no way I'm not saying I don't want him to sign a new deal. But I'm saying from his perspective. I don't see what he would get out of signing a new deal now. Um, if 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 the club's progressed and we're competing at the top with City and Liverpool and we're winning in the Champions League and we're doing well in cup runs and the games that and the games that he's not playing, we're doing well in, not because he's injured, but because we've got a good enough squad that he doesn't have to play the League Cup match or he doesn't have to come on with 20 minutes to play against. Romanovia FC down the road in the first round of the FA Cup proper, you know, like all things like that. It, it just means that, you know, I just think it would add to his decision to want to stay and would put the club in a much better position than where we probably are to negotiate now. Because like Cracker said, realistically, Conte 
probably isn't going to stick around if we don't win this year. Um, but if, if if he does go and we haven't won anything, I don't see why Kane would stay. But the only other question would be is, would it be too late for Kane then to go somewhere? Because everyone says last year was his year to go and become one of the best. He already is one of the best players in the world. But to become one of the best players in the world, win everything with whoever he goes to, because whichever team had him would have had that ability. Was that last season? Is it going to be next season if he does go? But I hope, I hope he gets a new deal. I think you're right there. Oh, I think you're right there in that kind of sense that, OK, I don't think Harry Kane would necessarily bite your hand off now, maybe. But like you said, maybe in the next couple of months when he sees that we're performing, when he thinks actually, OK, let's go and get this. I think that's true. I mean, Crackers, you kind of on the same wavelength um, with obviously the Kane deal as well. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, Kane deal. I mean, somebody's got to buy him to start with. So, and, uh, you know, we all know and love Daniel Levy. God bless him. So, he's not letting him go for like a tenner and a bag of chips, is he? So, somebody's actually got to find the money to buy him. Who's got £150 million to buy him? Because if Grealish is £100 million, then Harry Kane's at least, at least £150. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that's just the market. So, somebody's got to stump up £150 um Real Madrid don't need him at the moment Barcelona skin so they couldn't even buy me at the moment we're oh, third yeah it's it's it, it's I mean it's only really Chelsea Man United Man City uh, that that's that's chip sale that that's done they won't go back there all the time Pep's there now because he's you know he's had his bottom smacked over it so um I, cu I couldn't see him going to Chelsea I just don't don't think he's in his nature so it's only really Man United maybe Liverpool but then uh Salah's just signed to stay so it's not a case of him wanting to go Who's, who's going to buy him? Who's got the money to actually come out and buy him? Because everybody else after that, I mean, Newcastle, well, if he goes there, then he's just going for the dollars, isn't he? Because, you know, they're, they're not going to do anything anytime soon unless they go absolutely mad buying players. But we've seen no evidence of that at the moment. So, um, you know, uh, God bless Harry Kane, very unwisely using family as his uh, as his advisors that signed him up into a contract with no break clause in it, and uh, yeah, then they go off to go and see Daniel to try and get a break clause put in it. You got absolutely no chance. So there there is every chance that that he will stay. Um, I mean, if you look at where the club's heading as well uh, down this sort of NFL uh, route. And the possibility of an NFL team coming to actually be resident at the uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium or the Gatorade Dome or whatever it's going to be become, um, th there's every chance that he could be one of these hybrid sportsmen that actually finishes playing football and then just moves in as the kicker at the uh, at, at the new NFL team it, or gets involved with the NFL side. I mean, there's. It's not like it hasn't happened before. We had Clive Allen that was uh, that retired from football and then went on to play like gridiron for the London Monarchs. And uh, so there's, you know, there's a hell of a lot of opportunities for him going forward once football's over for him to be involved still at the club. But for the London Soccer Chickens or whatever the team's going to be called or L London Gridiron Chickens or something that... But will no doubt be called. So, yeah, it's um, I don't know. I think I think he'll get offered a lot of perks, maybe like that going forward. Sign a long term deal to take him to the end of his career, and then uh, with the promise of going into something on the NFL side because he loves the game, doesn't he? He's absolutely obsessed with it. So uh, if he gets offered something like that, he's got a young family. He's settled in the UK, so. Um, Every chance he will sign. I hope so. Like I say, it'd be quite interesting because I think I'd ditch the Vikings and start uh, supporting the Tottenham NFL team. Um, but uh, going slightly off, obviously, talking about players 
apart from Harry Kane potentially leaving or staying, I want to talk about the guys that have been staying at home during this pre-season. Now, one guy that I don't think is going to go anywhere, sadly, even though we want it to happen, is uh, Ndombele. Now, Connor, last week on the show, we spoke about if Ndombele goes on the tour, it could be a redemption. Uh, but Conte's having none of it. He stayed at home. So what do you think that means for him? <sighs> what does that mean for Tangi and Ndombele? Well... See, the, the thing is, right, he, as I'm sure even Leon fans will probably tell you, because there was all this talk about when he when he was playing at the start of last season for them and, you know, first couple of games, I think it was Leon, he was, you know, really turning up and this, that, the other, and it seems to have drifted off again. So in terms of what this means, I, I honestly don't know. I think it, he's definitely either going to rot in the under-23s or he's going to end up going out on loan. Or, you know what, I mean... He could always be a bargaining chip. He could always be if there's a player that we that we fancy in Europe and we want to do a sort of um, player plus cash deal or maybe like a sort of loan loan deal. I, I don't know. It's a <laughs> job at Deliveroo. Uh, well, you know, it's not a bad idea. No, it, it, it is such an odd one. And you just think as well, like in terms of the redemption mark, you've sort of half of you hoped that it was possible because Conte is so good at turning players around. But I think in general, it's just... The way the way he walked off, I think it was the Morecambe FA Cup game. Every wide run, booing in the way, he started, it just, yeah. The, I I don't I don't see a way back for him. Obviously, the fact that he's not gone on the tour. So in terms of what we do here, we just have to hope a club comes in, or maybe even his agent offers him out or something. And it's such a shame because so much potential there and so much money spent, and just you know, we a lot of us at the time were thinking this guy could be, ironically, our new Dembele. He's got it all. He's got this, that, like, the other, and it's just not worked out so yeah I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking yeah it all depends on, on a club coming in for him to be honest like 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 a lot with the other players there as well like like with your mate Winksy you know as well so um yeah yeah that's a great point there exactly he might well just go on loan and see the rest of his his contract out exactly yeah, and I think that's the trouble. Like I say, it's whether anybody will come in for them. Or has Conte done him a favour, Jay? Because after seeing all the running they were doing after, obviously, the training today, I think he would have died. I don't think he would have done one. I, think, I don't think he would have completed the training, to be fair, let alone the running after it. That must have been uh, the message going uh, to, to ask him if he wanted to travel. I reckon I reckon he was, he was on the plane, ready to go, and then Conte went... Oh yeah, we're gonna do uh, forty-two laps of the pitch. Uh, so, and then all you saw was the back plane door open, and, and Dombele put parachute on, jump out the back, and just like fly, you know, fly his way back to North London to hide away. But yeah, I, I think his time's done. I don't like uh, Lynch six on six has put in the chat about Paqueta. Uh, last time we bought a creative midfielder from Leon, uh, we're currently still talking about him. Um, so I don't think I want another one uh, in in the club from Leon uh, after our recent uh, transactions with them, uh, apart from Hugo Lloris, which isn't so recent, but that's still a great transfer. Um, but no, and Dombele, yeah, it's done. It's done. I just, I just, you know, I've been watching a lot of football manager videos on how to remove players from your club if you don't want them there. And I just feel like Daniel Levy should watch the Zealand tutorial on how to do it just to get him out of the club because I, I you know it made such a difference last year you know we talked uh, on a, a couple of podcasts ago about clearing out the dead wood and the people with the negative energy and he is definitely one of those players so whether he goes out on loan and we end up paying all of his wages I just think he just needs to be out of out of the uh, the dressing room I just with the way Conte plays and the discipline it only takes one bad egg to spoil the bunch so you know uh, yeah I mean, uh, crackers, it comes back to this. I didn't include Conte then, crackers. It comes back to this um, age old thing again. Um, who wants him? That's the trouble. Where does he go? No, no one. No one wants him. He's gone out on loan straight back. He's uh, honestly, Oli, he's a disgrace. The man is an utter disgrace. He really is. Have you ever seen a few years ago there was a documentary on? Um, one of the managers, and he was having the, the kids in on YTS. Like, ask your granddad's kid what YTS was, like the, the youth training scheme. And they would they would come in and they'd play at the club, you know, like, like the juniors. So it was down to the, the manager. It might have been somebody like Harry Bassett. He'd get them in and he'd say, sorry, son, you haven't made it. I've got to let you go. And these kids are absolutely destroyed. They are all 
burning to be professional footballers. It's all they want to do. They they wasn't getting on with schoolwork. I mean, it's different now. You have to keep your sort of education levels up. They absolutely it was all or nothing for them. And they were being told, sorry, you've got no future here. And off they went to go and get another club. These kids were in absolute bits, absolute pieces. They would have died to have a contract to play football. And here's a man who can play football. He's got talent for days, absolute talent for football, talent in for days. And he does that. He's a disgrace. He's an absolute disgrace. He's let down every kid that's ever been let go by a club. And uh, it, it, honestly, if I was the club, I would be tempted to actually sack him and not even pay his contract up and say, tell you what, see you in court. Because the rumours are that before they flew out back at Hotspur Way, um, they were asked to do 30 lengths of the pitch. And he got to about 20 and just gave up, just walked off. To, to like no, just no, I'm not not having that. Off off I go. See you later. Now, surely in a player's contract, I've I've seen a player's contract years and years ago. But I would hazard a guess that somewhere in there is your standards and behaviours within that contract that you must keep up a certain level of fitness and you know certain ways of conducting yourself and certain ways of doing this and doing that away from the club. You know. We, you're not going to be out drinking and doing this and doing that. So you 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 owe it to yourself and you owe it to your contract. Now I would I would say that somewhere in there he's actually breached that contract by not keeping himself in a nick to be able to do basic training and, and just having to give up. So if I was a club, I'd say right, tell you what, rip your contract up. You're now a free agent. Go and find yourself a club, and you know that two hundred grand a week you've got however long for. See you in court for it. Let's see how, how you get on. But his actual attitude is he's disgraceful. He's absolutely disgraceful. He owes it to every kid let by a, let go by a club to go and give it everything. And uh, yeah, so m- move on before I start swearing and getting really angry about him because like he's just he's just a waster, absolute waster. Especially for that kind of money. I mean, people will put a spin on it and say, oh but we should have never given him that money anyway. But that's not the point. Like, you're a professional footballer. You've, you've decided to go along this path, like you say. You owe it, like you said, to, yeah. to everybody that's wanted to be one. Yeah. Go out there and do your job. Because that Let me just... I'll, I'll caveat everything I just said, though, with as long as there's nothing going on with him physically or mentally. If, he's, if there's problems with him, then the club need to offer him every bit of help. Because I've, I've said before... Dean Richards years ago got absolute pelters off the Spurs fans, missing headers, doing this, doing that. Poor Sod was dying with a brain tumour and yeah. and uh, everybody just thought that he'd gone off the boil. So, I mean, as long as there's nothing going on physically or mentally with Ndembele, and it is just a, a, a pure matter of his effort and not being bothered, then that, that's just disgraceful. It is disgraceful. There's other things going on. I wish him all the best like, you know, in a recovery or getting some help or something, as long as he's asking for it. But if not, then, like, Ted, just get out of the club, please. Just go rip his contract up. No, I think you're right. I think that's the thing. Like you say, it's annoying to see him not performing, but if it's because of medically or um, mentally, then Fez. But like you say, Mm. you can only help someone if they're going to help themselves. And Mm -hmm. I think if he's still at this point and hasn't done anything, or like you said, it's purely just his effort isn't there, then... Sadly, I think the door is open and you can leave. Um, just coming off of uh, Tangai, I want to talk obviously about the new signing we've made, which is obviously our new free kick specialist. Now, Jay, I'll come to you for this one first because I'm going to butcher his name. So what do you reckon of our new guy? Does that mean Sonny's going to be on free kicks from now on and not Harry Kane? You just took the words right out of my mouth. As long as it's Harry Kane not putting him into the wall, I don't mind. That man is an absolutely phenomenal footballer, but that one deflected free kick against Aston Villa is just in his head forever. Living on um, it. Living yeah, on he's it. living, living, uh, living for it. Yeah, no, I, I think set pieces are, are some of we, we probably don't get goals enough with since Ericsson's been gone. Um, that real good ball delivery, which Sonny kind of does, but you also want Sonny to be in there and definitely direct free kicks. 
I, I think Sonny's proven his ability uh, with the national team. I think it's important that, you know, and I, I, I like that it shows that Conte's probably said to Daniel, I want this guy. Can I have him? And he's given him to him. So it, it again shows, you know, I know it's not this season, but I feel like this is our all or nothing season because there's a lot of fans that have always moaned about the support that, that the ENIC group give to the club and and how Levy runs the club and all of this. But this season, it seems like they've just gone, well, let's just go all in on it one year. Like you said, Conte's probably not going to stick around. And if it all doesn't work, they'll probably sell the club at the end of the season anyway. So, you know, it's like, you know, just go all in on this season. And, and I think that just little things like that, signing a coach that Conte wants, it just shows that the club's heading in the right direction. And, you know, Kane talks so much about backing the manager and that being a reason for him staying. I, and I think it's just a, it's another nice sign and it's another place that hopefully we'll get some goals from. Sorry, that what that quote, made, that little thing made me uh, giggle from Darren saying, don't worry, it's Kane's new set piece coach. It's not for Sonny. Um, but no, I think you're right. And obviously, talking about uh, his name, v I'm just going to say his surname because I've probably said his surname wrong as well. But Vio, talking about Vio, Connor, uh, he did obviously work with uh, Italy in the Euro 2020. So if that's anything to go by, it should be quite interesting. Oh, if it's anything to go by, then we're winning the league without a doubt, <laughs> obviously. <clears throat> no, Jay, Jay makes a really great point, I think. Straight away, that for me says instantly that Conte is getting back, not just on the player front, but on the coaching front as well. And, you know, if you look at our record across set pieces, scoring set pieces, defending set pieces, we, we haven't got a good record. We, we don't score from many set pieces. You know, you might get the odd Sonny versus Watford 1-0, you know, yeah, brilliant. But we, we do not really score set pieces ever since really Ericsson and then... Can, I don't know about the defensive side of things in terms of set pieces, but we love conceding from set pieces as well. So... This can only be a good thing if it's someone that Conte wants. It's always as long as Conte wants them, then why not? But yeah, if it's if the Italy Euro win is anything to go by, then then we're laughing, you know. No, definitely. And like you say, I think like Conor said, crackers. It's not just us scoring from set pieces. It's also the defensive side because we do let a lot of goals in. Not so much last season, but it was pretty much a bit hairy at some times when. Mm. Most people got boxed. Very much Gianni. By by the way, Gianni Gianni Vio. <laughs> So uh, apparently, is it seven and a half thousand set pieces, or seven hundred and fifty, like or seven and a half million set pieces he's got just <laughs> in his head? Come on, just step up and um, um, lever it. Come on, <laughs> just just lever it, man. Just take Kane off of set pieces to start with. All right, everybody's got a weakness, and and, and that's Kane's. He can't take a set a set piece. It's it's as simple as that. He can do everything else, and that'll do for me. But he can't take set pieces. So, Sonny, wow. I mean, during the, during the, the, the tournament with, with South Korea was, was incredible. I don't know. Maybe maybe a couple of the other new lads coming in might have a little trick up their sleeve. Or maybe, like, work some set pieces or, you know, a little ball over the top or something that can go for a draft excluder that everybody seems to lay down now. So, uh but as important as it is to try and nick something from these set pieces and corners as well. How many do we score from corners? I mean, it's just so few. It's ridiculous. So we do need to uh, work on defending them, which I think with a couple of new additions should be a bit better. And as you say, it was better last season. But um, yeah, Conte's obviously looked through some old videos and just thought to himself, well, where's the, the set piece one? Like, you know, and there's just this dusty old VHS at the back of the cupboard. Oh, here's the last one. <laughs> but we scored, like, you know, featuring Gareth Bow and Christian Eriksen and uh, and nothing nothing since then. So, uh, yeah, it's it's just that somebody else within the team now that's looking at every, every area now as a specialist, doesn't it? Everything. Nutrition. Fitness, sleep, um, uh, psychology, everything. I mean, just it's incredible the amount of jobs there must be within football now. Everything has a, a specialist area. So, um, yeah, uh, let's let's see what what he does. If we, if we you know if we nick five or six goals, if you can nick a set piece goal on eighty eight minutes uh, instead of losing one nil. 
um, oh, 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 away as we did. Where, where was we up north? It was a hell in a gal. Burnley, was wasn't it? Uh, Burnley. Yeah. That, thank mm. you. Thank you. Do you know, I'd actually just flown into the UK uh, from, from Lanzarote, and it was beautiful weather here. Left, came in, and the next day I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the train up to Burnley. I'm going to go up there because I fancy this. We was just coming off the back of beating City, if I remember correctly. So I'm thinking to myself, yeah, yeah, I fancy this. We'll go up there. We'll get a hat full. The rain was sideways. It was like minus five. It was like a two-mile walk. It seemed to be uphill both ways to the train station. Went up there and got beat 1-0. I was so happy, honestly. So <laughs> if you can get a set-piece coaching to go and get you a point or win you all three, um, then that's paid for itself, isn't it? I reckon he's been watching Ted Lasso. I don't know if anyone's watched it, but if you do, <laughs> go and Google yourself the Lasso special. And uh, I reckon that's where Conte's got his inspiration from, getting a set piece of coaching. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be right there, Jay. I think you might be right. Um, but no, it is very interesting times. Like you say, it feels like we're covering all bases at the moment. It's been very interesting to see what happens with right back, uh, whether we get another centre back in, who knows. Um, but it's going to be a very interesting uh, rest of the pre season, shall we say? And it'd be quite nice to see some more players on their asses uh, once Conte's finished with them in pre season. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much covers all tonight. I mean, obviously, the women are playing very shortly, so I wish them all the luck tonight. But before we go, I want to say a big thank you to you three. And obviously, we'll come around on our little carousel and say where we can all find ourselves. So, Crackers, I'll start with you, mate. It was so nice to have you on again. Um, like I say, thank you again. No, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And nice to uh, virtually meet you all. And, uh, yeah, at Mr Cracknell on the socials, I'm either poking Tory MPs with a stick or writing <laughs> rude things about them or talking about Spurs or trying to flog legends night so uh yeah all good and good luck to the lionesses tonight so uh let's let's see how, how we get on good luck to spain's uh <laughs> ladies team as well now that i'm here I have to, I'm, I'm contractually obliged to, to say such things so that i keep me residency now thank you for the invite on no, no worries. And definitely have you again on for the start of the season, Crackers. So that would be exciting. But thanks again, my friend. Connor, thank you again for coming on tonight. Where can everybody find you, my friend? Thanks for having me on. Uh, always a pleasure, honestly. I, I love it. And Crackers, lovely to meet you as well. This is, yeah, brilliant. Uh, so I'm uh, CTs McLovinia, mainly on TikTok, just talk about Spurs, football in general. Um, CTs McLovin Footy, a weird name, I know, on YouTube um yeah so come and say hello um but yeah as i as i say always always a pleasure so thanks for thanks for having me on and good luck to lionesses as well obviously <laughs> no thank you and like darren says i am kicking us all off so i can go watch it um, it's not very often england are looking like to be the favorites um apart from last year but hopefully the women can do it for us this year and jay thank you again for being my super sub is very appreciated where can everybody find uh you doing your uh, yeah, so uh, you can find me on the free tees, Twitch, Twitter, and TikTok uh, at JJ Season. I locked down that uh, app a long time ago. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, you can find me just spouting absolute nonsense and anti uh propaganda as always. You always have to get that in, I swear to God. Um, but uh, no, thank you again for all three of you for joining me. Uh, thank you to everybody else in the chat tonight as well i am also only 100 subscribers off of 2k which is my goal before the season starts so make please sure you tell your mates. yes sure thank you subscribe, you. Ollie, subscribe please make sure you do that that would be ace and it also means you never uh, miss an episode um so i'm going to say goodbye for now but holly Totsos live will be back next monday same time same place and keep your eyes out for tonight for a special uh, england match reaction review type thing for the lionesses um so yeah thank you all and until next time Come on, you spurs.